mare's robe is actually edged with uh, Russian sable, which is a fur uh, that obviously is not allowed any longer, um, but it was in that time, which was uh, 1891. Um, the hat that I'm wearing at the moment is, is worn um, outside by the mayor, but on this occasion I'm just demonstrating how it is and what it looks like inside. How does someone become a mayor? Um, they first of all have to be elected as, as one of the uh, town councillors. And then once they have been elected, they can then qualify to be elected again by their peers, which is all, all the 37 councillors in the chamber after they've been um, appointed and recommended by their group. Once they are voted, they then will become mayor. This is a shot over here um, in Worthing in 1928. This was June the 1st. Um, and it's a shot of all the dignitaries, the mayor and all the, uh, all the people, I suppose, that were, suppo that, that were important on the various committees and things. That's the mace bearer over here, incidentally. And he wore a, a top hat. Things were very much different in those days. There was a lot more money around than there is now. And so you will see that I want to carry on the tradition as much as possible. Um, I think I've always been interested in, in what's going on uh, in the country, whether it be in Canada or when I moved here to this country, because I think it's important to understand how the country is being run. These are items that uh, my children uh, gave to me uh, when I became uh, elected as mayor and it was my inauguration day uh, and they asked if I would have this as my mascot. So I decided to actually display it because I, was, I had it in mind that the children might be interested in, in, in this. Some people think that they're, uh, they're rats, <laughs> which I look at and think, hmm. But the children seem to get it right. They know that immediately that it's a, it's a beaver, and it's a Canadian beaver, which is one of the, the symbols of Canada. Um, I also have a pair of uh, gloves that my daughter gave me to remind me that uh, it does get very cold in Canada. But I can, uh, I can tell you, the viewers, that uh, when it gets damp and cold here, um, it can feel colder than it is in Canada. Town Hall. It's actually Art Deco, and I think it's a beautiful town hall. It's listed. And the value of the town hall, when it was actually created in 1933, which was when it was finished, was valued at 25 million pounds. And it's promoting the town um, socially and economically. Those are the things that I enjoy doing. The mace itself is very historical and traditional. Um, it was used originally in battle by the knights of old. Um, it was uh, made of a wood and then iron in those days, going back to the 12, 13 and 14 hundreds. But in Tudor times, it became a symbol of the authority uh, of the monarch. The chain you see over here is 22 karat gold, weighs 32 ounces, and uh, was actually bought in 1891. So there's a lot of history and uh, a lot of tradition attached to the robe and the chain itself. The coats of arms on the chain, as you can see over here, uh, would be from the Dukes of Norfolk, Viscount Hamden, Earl de la War, Thomas of Becket, or Archbishop of Canterbury. Um, and this is the crest of Worthing that you see here and is displayed on other areas. Um, it's, a, it's displayed on the mace. It's also displayed um, over the chair 
where the mayor sits when he's conducting full council meetings. I suppose that it's being able to find out everything or a lot more about the town than just in my own part of the world, my patch, which is Durrington, which is where I'm counselling. And um, I think I think that uh, not only finding out a lot more about the town, meeting a lot of different types of people, um, but meeting the children going to the, to the schools because the, the, the children are the future of this town and in fact the country. And this particular picture over here actually highlights many of the important women um, through history suffragettes you can see here it's in fact a celebration of a hundred years of women in public life and it shows you some of some of our mayors and, and some of the uh, important women who really made their mark on history meeting a lot of different types of people and uh, participating in a, in a lot of different kinds of uh, engagements and events um, which can actually range from opening uh, nail salons and beauty salons to attending uh, large events from large corporations. It's very interesting, every single mayor is totally different and they all have their own personalities because they actually are all unique. But each person brings um, a different background to the role and they have different um, outcomes and requirements for, for what they actually want from the role themselves. I think I enjoy actually the uncertainty of what each day will bring. 